Hi everyone, welcome back to High School Science 101. Today I've got a few really cool things to show you, but before I do, recently I was lucky enough to meet Adam Savage and Michael Stevens backstage at their live show Brain Candy. If it comes to your town or your country, definitely go and check it out because it was really, really good. If you can't, check out their channels, Michael's with Vsauce and Adam is with Tested. Now let's get into our third episode of Sciencey Stuff. Here we have a steam engine and society these days owes a lot to the invention of this guy because it allowed immigration across greater distances, it allowed materials to be transported from one side of a continent to another, and of course it was used a lot in factories and machinery in the industrial revolution. So we wouldn't be where we are today technologically if it wasn't for the steam engine. I'll just take you through a demonstration of how this works. So this big brass section here is called the boiler and that's where we place the water for it to boil into steam. And this is where we fill it up. We just unscrew this little cap here. Let's just top it up with some water. Um, I'm not sure how much water is in there, so it's a bit of a guessing game. I'll just put a little bit in there. Try not to spill it. <laughs> so I figured out that using a pipette or a dropper is a lot less spillage than using a funnel for this. I'm just gonna to top it up with this dropper. Just a bit more water just so we make sure that we've got enough steam for this to work. And I'll just do one more. And I think that should probably be enough. So I'll just dry it off here and put the cap back on. So these can either run on solid fuel, which are little white bricks that you can light on fire and then you can put them underneath the boiler here. But this one runs on liquid fuel. And it comes with this, which slots underneath our boiler. And we top that up with our liquid fuel, which in this case is ethanol. It looks like water, but it doesn't smell like it. And it's flammable. So we're going to use some ethanol. Ethanol is fairly safe to use. It just produces carbon dioxide when it burns. And um, it's, it is best to use it in a ventilated area though. Again, using our dropper, we're just going to place a little bit of our liquid fuel here, our ethanol into this cylinder and then we'll place this cylinder underneath our boiler which should produce enough heat when we light it to boil the water. So now that we've got our fuel source, our ethanol underneath our boiler with our water, we're ready to ignite it. And now that it's lit, that will start to boil the water in here and start to produce some steam. So you can sort of hear that some of the steam is being produced now. And we're nearly ready to get it going. One way we can tell that it's ready is that this little safety valve here releases excess steam when there's enough produced in this boiler to run the machine. And there's a fair bit of steam coming out of there, so I think we're ready to give it a go. So it just needs a little bit of a, a kick start. And there we go. And we also have a little whistle here. And that's just running off the steam that's been boiling in this uh, boiler here. So the steam's coming out through these, these pipes into this piston, causing it to move forward and backwards again. And it's escaping out through this little exit here. Very cool. And we also have reverse too. Let's see if I can put it into reverse. So that's in reverse now. And you can even see some of the flames coming up from our ethanol. So it's getting really, really hot inside that boiler and producing a lot of steam. And that is an incredible invention, the steam engine. In order to explain the next thing to you, I have to give you a quick lesson about hydraulics. So this is a syringe, but we can think of it as a piston as well because it's a cylinder and you've got a plunger inside that moves up and down. In this case, I've filled it full of colored water so you can see what's going on. 
And if I squeeze this syringe, if I squeeze it, the water will leave the syringe, obviously. But if we connect it to another syringe, we've created a hydraulic system because it relies on this water moving from one piston to another. So if I squeeze it, it's filling up this other piston and this plunger is moving out. And if this was filled with air instead, it would be a pneumatic system. But because it's relying on moving water, it's a hydraulic system. So that's all well and good, but what can we do with this system? You can get yourself one of these, which is a hydraulic arm. And it comes as a kit, but it's pretty easy to put together and it's well worth it because this doesn't rely on any electricity. It just uses these hydraulic pistons. So for example, there's a piston here, which is connected to this lever. And as I pull back on this lever, it's connected to this piston and it's sucking the water out of it through this pipe and filling up this one. And as the water leaves this piston, it's bringing down the plunger, which is connected to this whole part of the arm. And so it brings down the arm. And as I push down on this lever, it's pushing the water out of this one through this pipe and filling up this piston. And as it does, it pushes the plunger up and pushes up this whole part of the arm. And there are four other levers that are connected to other pistons that control different parts of the arm. And so with some practice, you can use it to pick up and move things. That's it for today and hopefully by showing you these things you've learnt a little bit about steam engines and hydraulic systems. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.